Hi, this is Professor McLaughlin with a short lecture introducing you to Chapter 9, Torts and Products Li Liability, in the Melvin textbook. You already probably know a little bit about tort law if you live in America or in California. A lot of people sue for things that happen to them. In Europe, they call this part of American law compensation culture, where if accidents happen in the United States and in litigious states, not just California, but New York, New Jersey, Florida, other states where people like to sue. This developed a little bit of a culture of compensating people for accidents. And that is not how torts and tort law is handled everywhere, but it is how we do it in the United States. And it has some benefits and it has some detriment. So let's get into it. And for the for the business context, torts are a very important part, particularly um, for employees, but for businesses that have customers who come into spaces. And uh, you can just imagine what's going on right now with COVID-19 and the the worry um, while businesses do want to open, it's unclear what the liability is uh, should someone contract COVID or be able to even trace that, that they contracted COVID in a specific location. So tort law is a civil wrong as opposed to a criminal wrong. And tort law covers acts where we harm one another, as opposed to criminal law, where the state steps in and sues criminal defendants for harm done essentially to us all on behalf of society. But tort law is civil, and it's where we hurt one another as individuals, where corporations as juridical beings hurt us, and it's where the law is compensating through a remedy someone who has suffered an injury or loss. And it wouldn't be a law class unless we had fancy law words, so the, so the tort fees or is the person who commits a tort, and that is tortious conduct, which just is the wrongdoing, the wrongful conduct. And sometimes that conduct is wrongful and intentional, and sometimes that conduct is wrongful and accidental, but accidental in a way where it is shown that a person was frivolous or cavalier without regard to what normal people would do safely. Definitely, for the most part, tort law is governed by common law principles, which means it's case law. There is a restatement of torts, and we don't cover that a lot in uh, this class. So it is a source of tort law, but it's not primary, it's secondary. And primarily, the law that governs torts is case law. So we have three categories of torts. We have intentional torts, where someone intended a particular act that caused harm to another party. And we have accidental or acts that are without willful intent 
that causes harm to another party, and we call that negligence. And this is probably what you're most familiar with, the Toyota sudden acceleration. Um, what else? Anything that, any environmental spill. Um, if you're familiar with medical device litigation, or breast implant litigation. I'm trying to think of other examples that you can relate to. A slip and fall in Target if there was liquid or water on the floor that was not cleaned up in time. It's accidental. For the most part, people are not doing, I mean, environmental spills. This is not something anybody wants to have. They don't do it on purpose. It is accidental without willful intent, but sometimes it's because protocols weren't in place or things were not properly secured. And then our final category of tort, strict liability torts. And strict liability torts are, were created by the law. And I, I want you to maybe appreciate, or I, I hope to explain how to appreciate that this law evolves over time. And so if you think historically about the development of um, consumer products over time, tort law, particularly particularly where we're suing companies for defective products or dangerous activities, if you think of a agrarian society, uh, the dang most dangerous it gets are uh, things that happen on a farm. But as we became more industrialized, more and more factories, as we developed more products, the dangers and the harms to us from those products, uh, once they were understood, then categories of torts were expanded to include um, causes of action that would allow for recovery for harm due to defective products. In our next video, I'll cover intentional torts.